Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. Yeah, I'm Dave Phillips. Uh, I'm one of the medical team here. I've been here 26 years actually, so um, although I now take a little bit of a step back because we've got a couple of young people who have newly qualified, um, but I still get involved, love the club, um, but look after the players. Um, so my name's Hayley um, and I work at Front of House, um, so on a match day I'm here every day. Um, with the sponsors when they come in, um, any of the guests, the away team. I've done a few sort of other clubs and then come here, but I, it's my local club, so I, I absolutely love it. I mean, I love to go to an away game. I love to, you know, see different grounds and how they run and how they do things. So it's interesting to see how they all sort of run differently. Yeah, we're a community-based type club. Um, we love working with the community. We love. Yeah, people here are really, really good. I know there's a lot of clubs who can say that they're exactly the same, but yeah, we're, it, we're a friendly organisation, yeah. Yeah, no, I think we try to be. We try to make people feel welcome, you know, relaxed. You know, it's, you're here to enjoy your day as well, you know. So um, I know we're here to work, but, you know, we're here to have fun as well at the same time. Two really good sides, I believe. The Dawkins are a good side. I believe we are a very good side. Um, so, yeah, good, hard fault top of the league sort of game really. Um, obviously we want to win, um, but uh, so do Dawkins. So it's just, let's hope it's a real good game for everybody. As you may have already surmised, we're in Dartford, where league leaders Dorking are taking on Dartford. The home side are yet to lose at their ground, while the visitors have lost just once in their last 14 games. And after last week's thrill ride against Maidstone United, Dorking are feeling confidence going into yet another tough fixture. Yet it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the Dorking camp. For rainbows you need rain, and that rain is coming in the form of a virus. Which means, unusually for Mark, his new signing, David Radari, is going straight into the team, three days after signing on loan from Creepy Crawley. McShane's ill, um, Bobby Joe Taylor's ill, we've got a few boys that are ill. Strong fucking wind, by the way. I'm stood here getting blown away, but a few boys that are real. No, we don't normally put people in, but Alfie's needed some real support for a few weeks. He's, you know, this year he's had to do everything on his own. And um, I think for me, calculated gamble today, really, playing David. Um, and um, yeah, interesting signing. Um, got an earring, um, <laughs> which I found, no, I found a fucking challenge on the bus journey. So he's taken that out. Um, and um, he's a top lad, real top lad. Come from a great family, fucking loaded, I'm told. And um, yeah, he's a fucking great player, best of all. Um, so we've really warmed him really quickly, to be fair. Got to enjoy, enjoy football while you're in it, mate. Do you know what I mean? You're a long time retired. Um, there's a lot of fucking ex-footballers walking around shopping centres on a Saturday. Um, and, uh, you know, we're the fortunate ones, so always uh, got a smile on our face, mate. They're just going to be all out to win. I think from their point of view, it's title hopes gone. If they lose today, they'll be looking at the playoffs. You know, 13 points behind 
11 games to go, so a lot of turnaround and whatnot. Um, so, but from their point of view, a win, and they've, their hopes are alive. It, it, but we're in a great position, Rich, do you know what I mean? Like, we're, you know, no matter what happens, we'll go home tonight, top of the table, and it's another game out the way. You've got to remember that. You know, um, we've been at the top of the table now for a long time. It's what good teams do, they find a way to stay there. So, um, I think it's going to be all out warfare today. Dartford are going to try and win in whichever way they can, mate. Whichever way they can. We hope for strong officials and um, we'll see how we get on. Thanks. Come on, mate. Oh! Cold. <laughs> right, turn this shit off. Who put this on? Who is that? Baz? Not that. <laughs> Three clean sheets, fucking eight goals, Baz comes back, fucking... It's the same music all the time. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's that one song I don't like. Every week I'll sit here that song and go off about it. Right, is everyone in? It's Bobbin, yeah? Bobby? Right. I don't mind, I don't mind the playlist, actually. It's just that one song. If we can just change that, Baz, as club captain, please. Um, been an interesting morning. We've learned that David uh, wears an earring. OK. Which I've personally got a massive issue with. Right, okay, yeah. But he's taking it out now, so we're okay. Um, so, um, Nicky is captain today, okay? And I'm backing Nicky to be captain today. All right, Nicky, well done. Um, you'll need to go with the wind, which is strongly going that way. Go with it if we can. All right, mate? Um, right, so we've got a few boys that have been ill this week. Just, uh, just as an FYI, if you're ill and you train, you'll fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> your body has to recover from being ill. So if you train, you have to recover from training and being ill. So it fucks you, right? So I know you boys sometimes think, oh, if I don't train, I won't play, but that's not the case. You've just got to say, Gaffer, I feel like shit. And I'll go, well, listen, recover. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, unless you're shit and I'll say train. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm joking. Um, so I don't like leaving people out who are struggling. Uh, Bobby probably thinks he wants to train because he wants to play, but he's got more chance of playing and we just don't do anything all week. So we'll, we'll, we'll put that one right. And this is the game we play all out to win. All out, right? So we're going to play this game at a serious pace today. So for that reason, we're going to play Niall. You're going to play on the right now. Okay, Nicky on the left, yeah. Um, they are... Well, listen. See that? Oh, my days. What is that shit on it? <laughs> What's that on that then? Vaseline. Why is there Vaseline on the fucking magnet? Don't stick. <laughs> <laughs> our budget is fucking massive. The size of our budget, we've got Vaseline on the fucking magnets. <laughs> That's how much money we put into you lot. You've got Vaseline. I mean, and that was the fucking left winger as well. Can we, we're going to have to imagine a fucking... There's, there's, there's other ones in the thing, but they're small. Can I just get them out quickly, please? This management, we've got nine management team and we're sticking fucking magnets on with Vaseline. Right, we're going to play a back three. I told you this the other night, OK? So they're going to go direct. We're going to win everything, OK? Yeah, here's their threat. Dead balls, uh, that Jeb's back today. Good dead ball player, real quality dead ball player. So we'll stand our feet, you know, little fouls and all the rest of it. Any dead balls, we're going to have to be good. Like Maidstone, we were good. We were really good against Maidstone. We've got to do that again today. OK, DJ, you'll be picking up. So you'll have to make sure that the most advanced player, you just, you, in advance, when it happens, you lot go, DJ, he's your man, he's the one playing highest, you pick him up. If we're absolutely fucked, yeah, um, then we'll have to shallow the whole pitch off. And shallow the whole pitch off means literally like this, just to leave it, high wingers, high wingers, shallow pitch, and put it there. But don't do it halfway house. That includes you boys down shallow. Don't drop in to areas where they can just split. Drop right in and then we'll play the ball. But I don't want to do it. If we're doing that, we're not going to win the game. It's just circumstantial for that five minutes. Does that make sense? Right? But I'm hoping Dan today can get us playing because he's really, really turned us around this year in terms of how we play. You've got our pattern going. You've been the man behind that, Dan. Nicky, try and keep your bloke high, OK? Try and keep him high, mate. 
your ball retention in these big games is fucking brilliant, okay? When you get the ball, if you can cut inside and score goals, brilliant, great. But these two are just going to get in the box and they both score goals. Now DJ, this is on my list as well, he's always looking for a ball. He doesn't want really, he, he'll keep the ball brilliantly, but what he also wants is, he wants like a Briggs movement, because he knows that, what, you know, how many, how many of those one balls have got us a goal? Like literally, we've taken the lead about five games with one ball from DJ. So our job is to keep the ball, be compact in midfield, keep the ball, be compact in midfield, keep the ball, go around the corners, keep the ball, and just do what we do. Okay, we've got a good warm up today. This is a good one to win. Okay, come on. What a good one to win this is. You've got to get that in your head. You're going home tonight winning from here, mate. You're fucking, that makes a big, big difference. It's a win going anyway in particular. Cool. What would you prefer? Let's, I'll tell you what I prefer, let's kick up that way, superstitious yeah. and that, because we won last time doing that. Yeah, yeah Dave, on that surface, shots off, mate. They'll, they'll press you for five, ten minutes till they get bored. So to start the game, be really switched on. Really switched on. Oh, it's going to be a battle, this is. Just how we like it, boys. Just how we fucking like it. Bit of a battle. Good warm up, Beardy. Really. Fucking brilliant. Brilliant, lads. Love that. Love that feedback. Oi, loads of information out there today. I need 11 leaders to win these games. To win these games, boys, you all have to turn up. You need leaders. There ain't no Barry Fuller out there, is there? There ain't no Sammy, no Ed Harris, no Jason Pryor. You lot have to lead. You lot have to sort it out. You lot have to lead the show today. I want to have information all over the park. Noel, yeah, you're, you're a senior player down here, Noel. Alfie, you're good on your days when you're doing your talking. Let's make sure Make sure the information, DJ, all over the pitch, Foggy, Josh, make sure we look like a team possessed that want to win this game, right? You've got to be 11 fucking leaders to win this game. This is not a naturally loud team. I need you to be leaders. The same applies at dead ball situations. Defence and attacking, you've got to stand up, you've got to have conviction to defend those situations in games like this. Let's have a blistering start. Take their record today, yeah? Come on. Come on. Come on, boys. Listen, we need to try and start like the home side to quieten the crowd down. So I want you to be full throttle for 10 minutes. 10 minutes full throttle, okay? Back when we had things to say about the drummer at the previous Dartford fixture, it didn't dawn on us here at a bunch of amateurs that we'd have to face the same crowd further down the line. But here we are. Dorking employing a back three with high-flying wing-backs, Dartford are looking to go long and drop the ball into the space behind the Dorking midfield. Thus, the question today is, will Dorking's expansive approach be successful, or will Dartford manager Steve King unravel the Wanderers' system? Seconds! Take him on! Take him on! Take him on! Dorking certainly starts as requested as they look to keep possession and push forwards in search of an early opener. <laughs> Noel McManus is seemingly brought down in the box, but the referee inexplicably refuses to award a penalty. Thus, when Josh Taylor makes an identical challenge and definitely gets the ball, the Dorking players are furious when the ref blows the whistle. Jack Jeb's free kick hits the wall, but Mark isn't getting over the penalty decision anytime soon. Ref! 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 The fucking penalty! 
Fucking useless! Don't swear, don't swear. Fucking line it up! Alright, don't swear. Dawkins players try to forget the penalty issue and continue playing in their opponent's third. Play, play, play! See it! Radari is getting into the groove up top and Josh Taylor is driving the midfield forwards. Rutherford wins a free kick, but like an extra in a 50s Western, Old Acres free kick goes over the bar. Dawkins' propensity for pushing the midfield forwards will ask a lot of their defence, particularly Old Acre, who has to fill in the gaps. Jack Jeb lops the ball over the Wanderers' back line and George Porter latches on before jabbing it past Dan Lincoln. Nicky! Tell him to keep the ball! The away side continue on the front foot, but the Darford defence manages to break up the play before the likes of Rutherford and Radari can get into scoring positions. Josh, 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 Josh! Keep going back. Problem is, running, run, running with the ball on this pitch is no good. The combination of a sticky pitch and a high press is making life extremely difficult for the visitors. Dan! Do it early! Do it early! Dartford are aware that high balls over the back are effective and it's a ploy they're going to continue with for the foreseeable future. One ball. Luke Allen, and we assume it's Luke Allen because we had to Google image search these players because Dartford don't put squad numbers on their team sheet tweets, drops the ball over Dan Gallagher's head and a neat touch and finish from Marcus Denanga gives Dartford a two-goal cushion. Despite the scoreline, Dorking have had more of the ball in their opponent's third but they're lacking the clinical finishes that United have delivered. It's days like today that Dorkin need their star striker to pull them back into the match. Do it early. Rutherford is thwarted by Dan Wilkes, and when he loses the hold-up battle, Darford sets off in search of a killer third. <laughs> Calvin Kalala blazes over, and Dorking are fortunate to remain just two behind. What we've got to do is try and get, we've got to just try and get some confidence in them. OK, but because we aren't retaining the ball that well, it, they're turning it straight in that space. Do you know what I'm saying? While they do look vulnerable on the counter-attack, Dorking are pushing the Dartford defence, so much so that Dartford captain Tom Bonner is employing some pretty blatant tactics to stop the threat of Dan Gallagher. Not that the referee sees anything wrong with it. He's all over Dan. Dan's just got to keep making forward runs in the box. But the ref's watching him, so Dan's just got to keep making runs in the box and he'll foul him. The ref's watching him as well. In the stand behind the Dorking bench, a small group of fans are regularly shouting the words TikTok at us. We're not entirely sure what their point was, but Mark was happy to engage in what is largely termed as banter. 
Hey. No, I could have fought it though, could you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I wash them out with them sort of jackets. La, la, la. Fuming. Fuming, look, fuming. The influential Luke Allen has picked up a knock, which could be detrimental to Dartford's plans. Meanwhile, with the interval approaching, Mark is thinking about how to mix up the team for the second half. Yeah. Dorking are desperate to halve the deficit before half time, and Dartford are even more desperate when it comes to stopping them. The free kick gives Bonner another chance to use his nefarious approach to defending. Ref! Ref! What this fucking Lino is holding him! In the final minutes of the half, Dorking carve out their best opening so far. Fucking chance that is. That's a chance, mate. Rodari thinks he's been fouled by a man incapable of giving a penalty away, and Wes Fogden fires over. I'm gonna um I'm gonna take Cheadle off. Yeah. And put eyes up left. Yeah. And put Baz out there. Yeah. Okay. He's turned down about the 80s movement. He's just he's not watching. He's yeah. been final third. He but what I, what I say, yeah he is, I know. I think we've been better last 15, 20. Yeah. But uh, he sucker punch goal, so yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, right, admit it's wrong. I don't mind that. I don't mind if you admit it's wrong. Massive penalty. Massive penalty. We need to show some uh, minerals here. Management team as well. Right. It's a fucking shit sucker punch goal. What I told before at the start was spot on. They're just going to win the ball and they're going to turn the ball, right? That's all they want to do. So we've got to be particularly careful of our ball retention. I think the last 15, 20 minutes, I think we've been absolutely fine. And I think we were last five or 10. Don't fall for the three card trick of a loud crowd and a team that are going to play basketball with us. If we, Alfie, you can't hold the ball up for the team, son. That is when teams like this love it. It's Nick, turn. So you've got to take, you've got to either keep the ball or take a foul, one or the other, but he can never come through you at any point. You've done a lot better last 15. Boys, because of the way they play, then it means the back three, you've got to be ready. You've got to be absolutely ready for the ball to be spun. You've got to have one eye on play, one eye on your man at all times, at all times. Okay? But I'm not going to shit myself. I don't fucking shit myself. I'm not a wimp. I'm actually okay with it. I'm all right with it. Right? We could have scored three, four goals that off, and that's without a penalty. But we're not going to start. Let's not start crying our eyes out. When they played us, we should have had our fucking goalie sent off in 10 minutes. Right? So let's not cry our eyes out at all. We're one goal from being back in a game that we can win. There's nothing in it, boys. Right? Nothing in it at all. Cheat because you haven't played and I don't think you get last 90, I'm taking you off. Can we need to do a, a clever move here, okay? Thinking about our next thing, but you've actually had a good half for me. Baz, um, do you think you've got the beating of that guy at the moment? The uh, winger? Yeah. Yeah? Baz, do you want to go on the left? Yeah? yeah? Okay. You go left side, okay? Simple as that. Nicky, yeah. he'll look to overlap you. The only danger in this game is when they turn over the ball. What we've got to do is remember, turn over a ball against these is dangerous because they're going to put you back free in foot races and they're going to put the ball in areas. A lot of, we've done a lot of good things in that half, but we're a team that plays 3-5-2. We don't bottle playing the way we play, no matter where we go. This is how we play, right? And they put balls in areas that against the back four don't even trouble you one bit. Right? So get us back in the game, get the next goal, and get us back in the game. Simple as that, okay? It's been a good last 20. Oh, right? Okay, come on! Come on! 
DJ, on our goal kicks now, go in the box and get it. Yeah, and then, and just put it literally, and just put it, We've done one, haven't we? Just put it straight into Niall's feet, or, or if, if, if um... <laughs> Boys, Dan, 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 keep it down tight, keep it tight, be clever. Your pattern's there, you're out playing them. It's just those little, don't run into shit areas and keep the ball moving. It's about our pattern, it's honestly just about our pattern. Keep the ball moving, short, sharp, all over the place, right, okay? And where possible, keep playing forward. Baz, if we do go to, if we if we do go to a back four at any point, then we've got an overload. Yeah. Okay, see so the full back to go high and one of the centre of us would be spare. Yeah. Baz, even if we concede, just say to the boys, just just keep going, just keep going. We hear drums, drums in the deep, they are coming. Dartford's high press forces Dan Lincoln to go long, and he does as requested pre-match, finding Rodari, whose chest helps begin another phase of attacking play. Rodari lays the ball off to Nick Wheeler, but the misplaced pass allows Kalala to steal in, leading to a late challenge from the Wanderers' captain. That's been the story of our game. The story of our game has been shit little bits. There, Nile, ball yeah, retention, yeah. gives it to him. Yeah. There, sticks a leg out. Yeah. Just, just giving them the ball, and all they, want, all they want to do is get the ball, turn the ball. So I know Beardy's going mental defence, and of course your marking can always be better, but it's one of those, they're coming out, it's breaking down, they're slinging it behind. You said, do your stick or twist. Don't worry about the ref, mate. It's Honestly, fucking pulling, I know, off the mate. Ball, though, I know. It's a yellow card. I know, I know. But we're in a championship, though. Got to do it properly. The only people that can do it is them. They're the only ones who can well. control that ref for us. Let's get a goal and we're back in the game. Get a goal, we're back in it. Come on. Yet again, from a corner, Tom Bonner is laughing into his sleeve as he wrestles Dan Gallagher out of the equation. But Dorkin continue to press. Oh, no, tell Foggy to relax. Tell Foggy to stay there. Could they keep three up? One of our lot should just take one in. You know what I mean? Because otherwise it's dangerous. Yeah. Nick Wheeler's cross into the box almost certainly connects with the oddly positioned hand of Jordan Winter. But given what the ref has let go so far, Dartford could probably use those giant hands you get at American sporting events and still not get penalised. As Mark plans his next substitute, Rutherford, Rodari and Fogden conspire to set up a chance. Mark puts the changes on hold, having seen Fogden burst into the box to set up McManus. It's 2-1. Wait, wait. We're going to do just Jim for now. Jimmy. I think Foggy's blind. We're going to get a nine in midfield on that Murta. Murta must be so lonely without Briggs. Jimmy, we're going to do one. Jimmy. Oh, great shift. David! 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 Come on! Dartford have changed shape and as a result, Darren Oldacre is getting more of the ball. Although when he has to go this shallow, he struggles to pick out the right ball against the high press. Hop it on! We don't give them ones. Oh no! A low drive from Jack Jeb reminds Dawkins that they need to be wary. Sub Jimmy Mewitt is looking sharp, and he robs Jaden Sweeney to set up Alfie Rutherford. Jimmy! Oh, 
well done, Jimmy, well done. Hold the line. Hold the line. Last week, Mark sent goalkeeping coach Tony over to Dan Lincoln's goal to remind the keeper not to play the ball onto Dan Gallagher's left foot. We can only assume Tony got lost on the way and could be anywhere by now. Give it my left, mate. Mate. What's he giving that Gallagher on his left? Why do we keep doing it? With the referee dead set against awarding penalties, Gallagher gets away with just a free kick. But Jack Jeb fancies this as much as a spot kick. The midfielder's effort skews off the head of Josh Taylor and clatters off the crossbar. Dartford badly wants a decisive third, and rather than defend the lead, they go looking for it. Gallagher gets away with a clumsy challenge on Odi Alpha, and Lincoln clears, but the ball's coming straight back at him. George Porter's 20-yard effort is thwarted by the fingertips of Dan Lincoln and shaves the bar, as if it were Jada Pinkett's head. <laughs> oh shit, here he comes. A fucking ball retention, man. All over the internet, that's the biggest issue by a mile. You can, you can have as many fucking shape and patterns as you want. You've got to keep the ball. Dartford are relentless, and Porter is leading the attack with persistent intent. As Old Acre finds more space, he sets up Dorking's own counter-attacks, and it's down to Alfie to find a way through the Dartford back line. Questionable challenge on Gallagher goes unpunished, and just as Dorking are taking charge, Darford create the opening they've been craving. Neat footwork from Kalala allows him to play in George Porter, and the striker gets his second and Darford's third. Let's go, Jim, let's go! Come on, Jimmy, let's go! Still, like the bloke with the drum behind the Dartford goal, Dorking just won't bloody stop, and they immediately continue their hunts for a second goal. up with captain Nick Wheeler and the experienced winger fires inside the near post. The game is back on. Oh, mate. How's your luck? 
Come on! Come on! Come on! DJ, come on! Josh! While a Dartford player receives treatment, one member of the crowd figures it's about time he made the game all about him. You got a bloke on the pitch, eh, mate? Rather brilliantly, another Dartford fan refuses to let the lad clamber back over the fence. We will watch this criminal mastermind's career with great interest. That's a push, Raph. Hook it, hook it, Moro. Go, Joshy. You need to get it in there. There's two to go plus. Shuffle! Oh, Jimmy. Let's be honest with each other, Tom Bonner. You have been asking for that. Very poor. What a Massive penalty. Oh, Massive penalty. <laughs> Cheers, pal. Thanks. Listen, get changed in a minute. The biggest, um, I'll be honest, I think, I think the refs had a really poor game. It's hard, you're hard pushed to say a ref can cost you a game. I thought our biggest issue by a mile in that game was, was ball retention. Um, you know, just, I know it weren't an easy pitch to play on. I know it was tricky, but he's missed the foul for the third goal on you. Do you know what I mean? There's some, there's some big, he didn't want to give a decision to blow. I thought you wanted to win it so much that that was half the battle, the first 15, 20. We're literally like fucking getting the ball. We're like razor, razor sharp, trying to carry the ball. Everything we're doing is so fucking high tempo. I thought we was almost too high tempo. I thought we had to relax on the ball a bit more, get our pattern going. And then the period before half time was a great period. That 20 minutes was all us on the ball. So I thought we, we, we played that game. You can't, I can't blame you for wanting to fucking win it in the way you did. But I thought we played it not as compact as we had to because we knew they were going to turn it into areas. So if we give the ball away, it's going to be a, a long day for our back three in front of a couple of thousand people. It was a gamble to play a back three against this lot. You know, I'll take that one to be fair, boys, because, you know, we obviously we speak a lot about it and we were very, very tempted today. Um, to go to a back four like we did at our place. But off the back of, um, off the back of, tune in to me boys, I'm not doing it for fun. Off the back of, uh, I think, three, four clean sheets and some good performances, you have to back yourself. So I'll probably make the same decision again, to be honest. The first goal today was a massive goal for them because I don't think they thought they could get much out of this game. But that first goal was a massive goal. And I don't actually, I don't actually blame um, DJ and Dan and, and that area. For me, we, it's very difficult when you when you got a, a front high press and your back three want to get out, if you're losing the ball, like it is a fucking, you try playing there, it is not an easy position because you're sort of walking out and you're watching play, you know, next minute breaks down, turned in an area. 
and I, and I felt that our ball retention in front of the back three um, could have been better. Um, that's the bottom line. Um, so, look, I think we've done loads well in that game. We had chances. I think the one you, you blazed one over first half. We had chances like that during the game that, you know, we could have scored five goals. Uh, we stayed in it till the death. Um, I thought they they done the marginal stuff quite well. I've got to give them credit. They wanted to fucking beat you. Do you know what I mean? They wanted to beat you. They done the marginal stuff well, little nicks and stuff like that. But but we listen. We had so many fucking chances in the game. You got to see it for what it is, right? We are here this year to win. So we're going to be very positive about today because it was one of those days today. It was one of those fucking days. Okay. Make sure the kick goes in right for Mitchell and Martin. Okay. Management to get together quick. I think match play, 12 games to go. We should have come here. We should have played a back four because you know that not losing is your key thing against a title rival away from home. We gambled, didn't get away with it, but we've, we've gambled and got away with a lot all season. You know what I mean? So we just have to take our medicine there. We're we'll speaking the bus anyway, boys, I was on there. Yeah, frustrating. We could have done things a little bit better than what we did, but, you know, when you're in charge of the team, you... Uh, you have to take share of responsibility, you know. We came here, the goals we conceded, I, I genuinely don't think we conceded in a back four. Like, you know, like, you know, we, we gave ourselves, I think this is something like the third or fourth 3-2 against Dartford. I think they've all gone like either way. We won 3-2 here last time. They won 3-2 at ours once. They're not a team to play a back three against, Rich. Um, they turn the ball into dangerous areas and they try to win a one-on-one -on -one battle. First goal was, you know, just a ball over the top. Um, and their goals just came from sort of one-on-one -on -one defending, albeit they, they, they were real, you know, they, they finished their, their chances really well. So my point is, yeah, we could, have, we could have been a bit tidier today. I thought we were a bit scrappy. We should have took our chances. We had enough of them, I think, when we watch it back. Um, but equally, you know, a back four probably was what we should have done. But off the back of, you know, successive clean sheets, we just stuck with the team. And I'd probably make that same decision again, if that makes sense. We tend to try and, you know, be consistent with our decision making. I knew it was going to be that kind of game. Um, I kind of knew it was going to be end to end because we we're attacking side. They're an attacking side. Um, so yeah, I was prepared for that sort of a good game and I think it was a fantastic advert for Conference South football. Yeah, listen, this, um, I mean, with the squad we've got and the players we've got here, so obviously it's a privilege to be asked to be captain for even if it's one game or however many games, it's, um, it is a privilege, but um, obviously I'm a bit of a shame about the result, but it was, it was a nice part on my behalf to lead the lads out today. I just wish the result was a bit different. You know, when you've worked your way into a good position in the league table, you have to be absolutely like, you know, not lose it is the, is the key message, do you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, we haven't got where we are without, you know, being a bit risque, do you know what I mean? And we came here on their patch to take him on in our sort of flamboyant formation, if you like. Pitch didn't help us probably keep the ball as well as we would do normally. Um, and Dartford exploited that back three, so we've got to give credit to them. And off the back of um, Medibank, um, you know, where, where our keeper should have famously been sent off, they might, feel, they might feel like they've got their own back with that penalty that should have been in the first half, you know, uh, after five minutes. Listen, we play our, our football that everyone knows. Um, and even on a pitch like today, which was probably one of the worst we've played on all year, um, I think we started well. We, we, we started getting our pattern going. I think we had a couple of early ch chances, a shout for a penalty, and then, listen, you get teams in this league, and you know, Dartford are one of the teams that do it. You know, if they win the ball, they lump it forward, look to turn you, and put you in a dangerous situation, try to get one v ones. And I think, you know, a little mix up at the back and sort of one long ball, and they're in, and sort of they're one nil down. And I think their goal for them was a good time for them to score because they, they were on the back foot for definite and it felt like that on the pitch. And then sort of, I think once they get that early goal, it sort of gets their crowd going. And, you know, and that's, that's, but that's what happens at these, these levels. You know, you can get teams like that, just one long ball and they're in. We, we made a little tweak. We knew that if uh, Darren Oldacre could get on the ball and start to dictate the game, 
than he would. So we had George Porter to sit on him, and George Porter was outstanding, man of the match for me. Not only the goals, the work rate, the effort, and stopped him playing. He didn't until the last sort of 20 minutes when Dawkins scored. He sort of come alive a little bit because we had, we had injuries. We had two injuries within the 90 minutes, the centre forward and the central midfield player, which changed that shape again. So George had to drop into a left midfield side and left Darren with a bit more space to try and make things work. Yeah, that's what you do your homework. I was at the game last week when Dawkins beat Maidstone. So I could, I know them inside out anyway, because you know I spoke to Mark this morning. I spoke to him last night, and spoke. He had a cup of tea in the office today. Like we, we're close friends, you know. So I know the way he plays. Um, good side, quite rightly doing what they're doing. You know, when a team wins 13 out of 14 games, total respect. You know, that's a very, very hard thing to do, and they're at top for a reason. So top scorers in the league got the most points in the league so they deserve to be where they are but we knew today if we lost the game they win the league for me that's my opinion 13 points to make up you're never making it up seven in it now game in hand to us the whole picture's alive again isn't it and that, that's how I felt I, no, I never thought for one second we were out of it I just thought if we get a goal and it's just one of them you know we, we finally got the goal and then it's um pushing, pushing for that equaliser, then sort of could be a foul, maybe not, but they've caught us again on the counter and they've nicked a third and then sort of got ourselves back in again. And then it's just, yeah, it just wasn't our day. It, was, it felt like that, it just wasn't our day, yeah, but... Um... Well, it's my mum's birthday today, so I'm going down there for a Chinese. Um, she's got the whole family over, sisters and cousins and everybody are going there to see her. So, yeah, that's my night tonight. I don't drink, so I'm teetotal. So I'll go and have a Chinese, yeah. I'm 31 now, so not a lot. I'll be going home, bit of food with the missus. <laughs> um, yeah, chilling out, chilling out. No, nothing wild anymore. Yeah, she'd, know, she'd probably know the result, uh, so she won't talk about it. Um, she probably would have looked online and thought, I won't mention it when I get in. But no, we don't, we try, yeah, don't talk about it too much, but we just, yeah, a nice relaxed night, bit of food. And just, yeah, concentrate on the week's training and then get ready for next weekend, that'll be it. it, it this, is a, this is an absolute, fucking cannot afford to think about it job L literally cannot afford to so i can't afford to you know it's one of those you, you can't look at social media you can't do anything else except plan training and plan next saturday because you have to get yourself back in the saddle really fucking quick so that's what i'll be doing there's nothing to be gained ain't nobody going to give us three points back there's some learns there today mainly for the management team and that's what we've got to take Cheers, mate. Hey. Fucking hell. It's like, it's like Mean Machine here, isn't it? Have you ever seen the film? The prison walls. It's the fucking concrete, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I thought we, I thought we were going to come back and equalise. Mate, like, with the shit they were giving us from behind, I'd have got, I was going to go fucking nuts. So I was ready to go nuts. Thanks for watching this week's Bunch of Amateurs. We really appreciate your support. So all we're going to ask you to do is hit like, hit subscribe and leave a comment because it really helps us reach more people. This week's comment of the week is from IC-17, which is a strange name. The young Maidstone lad, is a right chap, absolutely loves it. What non-league football is all about. Exactly. That's exactly the point.